We're all familiar with ProPresenter, the top tier live presentation software used by tons of churches around the world. And there are other softwares that do similar things to ProPresenter like Easy Worship or Proclaim. But realistically, I feel like they all kind of fall short of ProPresenter and its full feature set and support. But there's a newcomer to the scene and it's called Freeshow. If you've used ProPresenter for any amount of time, you know one thing about it. It can get pretty pricey, especially if you're a church plant with a very small budget. At the time of recording, it's $400 a year for a single seat license, or $1,000 a year for a full campus of 20 seats. Depending on how many of its features you actually use week to week, that can seem absolutely worth it, or it can seem like an impossible target to hit. What with all the other things churches need to buy these days. And that's the exact problem that Free Show is trying to solve. As you can probably tell by the name, Free Show is aiming to be a completely free ProPresenter alternative. When I first heard about it, that sounded like a too good to be true claim. But I've got to tell you, it's a pretty robust piece of software. So let's take a look at it and see if it could be a good option for you and your church. Now, full disclosure, my church uses ProPresenter and although I've played around with Free Show here at home, I've never actually used it in a live show production environment, so I can't speak directly to long-term stability or performance or anything like that. All right, so you can find Free Show online just by Googling it or by going over to freeshow.app. Then you can download it on whatever computer you need to. This is a good time to note, they actually support Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, if that's the kind of person that you are. Now, I don't know a lot of church techs that are setting up a Linux machine in their tech booth, but if that's you, then hey, this might be your best option for a presentation software. But anyway, installation is super easy and smooth. You just download it here. And once you open it up, you're greeted with something that definitely feels pretty reminiscent of ProPresenter. You've got a very similar left to right flow with bins here at the bottom of the screen. You can definitely see the ProPresenter influence over the visuals of the app. And honestly, I think that's a good thing. It's definitely not as polished, but functionally it's pretty similar. And that makes sense to me. ProPresenter found something that works and they're just kind of copying it. So let's look through it and some of the main features that I think most churches are gonna need on a Sunday morning, as well as some things that I think are particularly cool about Free Show. So over on the left here, you have your projects panel. Now you can group those projects into folders like this, so kids ministry, Sunday mornings, uh, youth group, and you can have subs folders. And then inside of those, you actually have the projects themselves. So I've created one for May 5th. Now, once you jump in here, you can have sections, which are basically labels. And I think you can also create some notes in here which is, you know, pretty cool. And then inside of each section, that's where you actually create shows. Now you can see I've got an example Sunday morning kind of filled out here, but most of these shows are pretty empty. So if you've got existing shows, that's awesome. You can kind of drag them around, reorder. You can go in here and, you know, create a slide and put whatever content on it that you want. Pretty normal stuff. But if you don't have any shows, there's a few ways to create a new one. One is you can just right click and say new show. You'll be able to type in a name. So let's just say, post service announcements. And we'll put it in the presentations category and we'll just go ahead and create an empty show. So you can see it dropped it here and we could drag it wherever we wanted to. Your next option is in the shows tab down here, actually create new show. And then let's say we wanted to add a song. Well, we have two options for that. One is we can type in the name, so how great thou art. And then we could create a new empty show and then add all of our lyrics. Or we could go to quick lyrics and actually type them in one by one, but with these nice little section headers so that we can automatically group them. Or we can use the little search button here. When we click that, it's gonna go ahead and search online for this song and pull in the lyrics if it finds it. Now, I will say, it's usually pretty good with older songs, but some of the newer stuff, it really struggles to find it. And I know ProPresenter has the same feature using song select, and I feel like that's a little bit more exact and you can choose different arrangements and all sorts of things. So. This is a great feature when it works, but I definitely wouldn't count on it to work every single time. Once it pulls them in here, you can edit them however you want if you find something is different. You can also go into more options and choose how many lines and some other random format stuff. So we'll go ahead and create that. And you can see it dumped it in here. Again, we can rearrange them exactly how we want. Another thing to note is it also dumped it into our show bin down here below. And this is permanent throughout all of our different projects. So if we created a new project or went into a different one, we could actually drag this song into it just exactly the same way. Now you can see as of this point, it's working pretty similarly to ProPresenter. It looks a little different and the terminology is definitely not the same, but overall it's kind of the same workflow. Now, once we've added some shows and we are showing them up in here, there's a few different ways that you can actually view them based on what it is you're trying to do. We've got a grid view, we've got a more condensed view, 
Then we have more of an edit view where you can edit slides one by one. We have a lyrics view if you just wanna see the plain lyrics, or we actually have like the text edit view where you can more powerfully go in and change your verses around and change things at a pretty low level. Now you can see here and over in the side that all of these things are actually grouped as well into verse, verse two, verse three, verse four, or let's jump into a different one that actually has choruses and bridges, and that's awesome. Then you can actually build what's called a new layout or is really just a new arrangement. And let's say we wanna clear these out and then we can just actually build out the song exactly how we want it to be. Now, just depending on which arrangement we need, that's the one that we'll select down here and we'll be able to use it. ProPresenter does this using their reflow tool, very similar. So now that we've got a project built, you can actually start showing your shows on your displays. So just like ProPresenter, you just click on the slides and it shows up over here. Looks pretty familiar to ProPresenter, huh? I will say the performance seems really slow right here. I think it's because it's trying to use my Mac display as the actual display for the room. When I tried this on my Windows PC and I used a separate monitor, everything was pretty fast and snappy, so your mileage may vary with that, definitely worth looking into, but I don't think it's a problem with Freeshow itself. What's that? You're asking about stage displays? Well, you can also have a stage display. If we click up here to stage, you can actually see exactly what it is it looks like on the default layout. You can create new layouts for it, and you can add all sorts of things such as the current slide, the next slide, a clock, video countdown, all sorts of things that you need to have on your stage display for the people on your stage to use as a confidence monitor or just to get some info. Going back to the show tab, different slides can also have actions on them to perform when you select that slide. So it can be things such as, you know, setting a timer to go to the next slide after a certain amount of time, which is great for an announcements pre-roll. But you can also do other things where it triggers a video or some audio or some other thing. Now, this isn't quite as powerful as ProPresenter's macros. It doesn't look like you can actually stack actions in quite the same way, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming right down the road. Don't count on it. I don't have any insider information, but it seems like something that would be nice to have. Now, when it comes to editing slides, it's pretty similar look as well. You'll go over here and hit edit, and then you have all sorts of control over the text box itself and different items that you can actually add to the slide based on what it is. Now, something interesting about Textbox is you can actually edit CSS for the particular slide. I don't really know who's doing that on their slides. That seems a little advanced and a little too in the weeds, but it's interesting to know that it's there. If you don't wanna edit slides one by one, if we're talking about a song, for example, you can also create templates. In fact, you don't even need to create your own. They come with a bunch of pre-built ones, but you can create a new template and you can add it and use it across all of your shows. This is great if you wanna have maybe centered lyrics for your main screen, but maybe lower thirds for your live streams. You can also add media to your shows, similar to ProPresenter, jumping down here to the media tab. Now, normally you can add pictures or videos just like you could in say ProPresenter by selecting a video and kind of dragging it into your show, or you can even set it as the backdrop to your slides just automatically. That's pretty cool. Now there's a lot more stuff under the media tab here. And so let's look at them real quick. First off, cameras. So this will actually pull in your webcam or any other cameras that you have plugged into your computer and allow you to use it as an input for your screen. So this could be potentially if your live stream your switcher, such as an A10 mini is plugged into your computer, you could send that out over Freeshow's output to use as iMac. Or maybe you just have a single camera on your baptistry that you wanna be able to show for a close up during baptisms. Well, it's there built in. You can also send a screen capture of the screen that's plugged into your computer. I don't really know when you would use this in a church setting, but if you're not a church and this is something that you need, this is kind of awesome to know that it's here. Finally, and this is my favorite one that's kind of interesting as far as media, is the online tab. It automatically integrates with YouTube, Vimeo, and Pixabay in order to pull content from online and show them directly inside a free show. So if we look at YouTube, you can add a new video just based on a link, and then it shows up here under your media tab just like anything else would. You can then click on one of them and it'll start playing on your screen. Now, you have to be a little bit careful with this because you might run into some copyright infringement issues. I'm not a lawyer, don't take any of this as legal advice, but if you wanna play a YouTube video, you can. Vimeo works exactly the same way you add something through a link. Finally, Pixabay is kinda of interesting. Pixabay is a repository of pictures and videos that you can use for free. So let's say you wanted some pictures to use as a backdrop of your songs. Well, great, you can drop one in there automatically just pulling it from online. What's even cooler to me though is videos. If you want a video backdrop for your slides, but you don't want to make or buy your own, great. You can find them straight from that Pixabay tab and drag them over there. They may not all be perfect, but they're free and it's kind of cool that it's built right in. 
Overall, there's a lot of editing that you can do with these slides, whether through the editor or by dragging media onto it. You can do basically all that you want to do. I do feel like it's a little bit clunkier than ProPresenters. Like, I can't really put my finger on it, but just the interface on how you actually select all the different settings and build out your slides just feels like it could use some work. I think you could do everything you want to, but just know that it will probably take you a little bit longer than the equivalent would on ProPresenter. Now, if you're a church that likes to just display scripture straight from the Bible and not build out your own slides with the Bible verses, you can do that too over here in the scripture tab. You'll just find the book, the chapter, the verse, and then shoot it on over to your screens. You can even change the template based on how you actually want to display it and then refresh it. And then you can just walk through the verses as you would. We don't personally use this feature, but it's cool that it's here. You can even look up different versions of the Bible and display whichever one you need to at any given time. We also have an overlays tab for things such as notices and any kind of things that you need to overlay your slides. I think people usually use these for like, hey, come pick up your kid because they're being bad and we can't handle them anymore. We don't really use a lot of overlays, but this is where you build them out. And finally, over here, you have the calendar tab. Now over here, you can create events, scheduled shows, or even configure timers. It seems pretty robust, but to me, the actual interesting thing here is how kind of complicated it is to figure out how to use it. Now, this might be a good time to note that Freeshow actually has really good docs on their website that you can scroll through in order to figure out how to do exactly what it is you need to do. So the calendar, for example. But I think it would be really nice if more of this was built into the app in a way that was a little bit more intuitive for the average user. I'm a pretty techie guy and sometimes jumping between docs and the actual app is a little annoying. And I can't even imagine the small church pastor who's just getting started with presentation software having to do that. So that might be something that they could work on. So that's kind of the basics of the actual presentations, the editor, the different features that Freeshow offers. But let's kind of dig into the settings for a minute to see a couple extra things that I think are worth mentioning about Freeshow. So we'll jump over here. And first off, you can create more displays for Freeshow to output things. You can also create styles that you want to be applied to each individual output. This is similar to ProPresenter's looks. It's not quite as robust, but it is cool to see that they have this right off the rip, especially since so many of us are live streaming or have more than one display that we want to format differently. And it also supports NDI right out of the box, which is awesome if you're a church who uses that. So over here though, you can create actions that are performed based on MIDI inputs. It looks like the actions that you can do are fairly limited right now, but I'm sure they're going to build out more of these. And it's cool to see that they're prioritizing that right off the rip, especially for churches that try to automate a lot of things that they're trying to do. Over here, you can change your theme of Free Show if you don't like the black and pink. You can jump over to Aqua or, oh my goodness, a uh, light theme. No, let's go back to Aqua. You can also configure your own colors. This doesn't seem that important to me, but it's kind of cool to see that you can make it your own. Now finally, my favorite thing in the settings here is the different connections to the app that you can set up. As long as you're using a device on the same network as your presentation computer, you can open up a page in a browser and get control over Freeshow or even a full presentation in here. There's even different types of connections based on what it is you're doing. For example, if we open up Remote Show and click the link or scan the QR code, that's kind of nice, it'll jump open this app where we can actually control exactly what's going on in here. Pick which project we wanna do and then jump in and see all of our slides and actually control exactly what's being sent where. Next up, you have Stage Show, which is actually just your stage display and it will show you what's on there. So if we select this slide, great, we can see it right there, our stage display. This means that you can set up a stage display without having to run a cable anywhere. I think there's a little bit of lag to it and it's reliant on your network rather than a cable. So your mileage may vary on how reliable it is, but it's kind of cool that you can do it here like this. Next up, we have Control Show, which is similar to Remote Show, but a little bit less featured. This is something that you would really pull up on your phone, for example, and it's more like just a remote control. Well, there you go. It actually just kind of crashed on my computer here, as you can see. This is probably not a great advertisement for it, but this is kind of the risk of running software that's open source and doesn't have the support or vetting that something like ProPresenter does. Probably because I was playing a video in the background, but again, that seems like something they support. I'm hoping again, it's because I'm playing it on my same display, or maybe it's just not opti optimized for Apple Silicon. Maybe that's all that's going on. But let's jump back into here and connection. And let's look at control show this time. So this is more of just a remote that say your pastor could use to advance the slides as he's preaching. And finally, output show, which is the same as stage show, but it's just showing your main output slide. So if we actually select something to show here, 
and let's clear the picture or the video just in case. Great, we'll see it here. This is super cool because again, you could send that output kind of wherever you want in your building as long as it's still on your network. As we're in here, also notice that FreeShow is now able to be controlled via Companion. If you're interested in setting up Companion to help control your streams, check out the video up here. I think it's pretty new for them, so it might be a little buggy. But that's FreeShow in a nutshell. You can see it's got a ton of features and it's still being actively developed and updated every single day. I do feel like I have to warn you, don't start using this based on the promise of future updates and features, but rather what it can do today. You never know when it's gonna be stopped getting updated. It's not perfect, but I feel like it does check all of the main boxes for a basic presentation software. I've heard a few complaints about overall stability and you guys saw some. And I don't really know what kind of computer you're gonna need in order to run this in a super performant way, but a little bit of testing will go a long way in answering those questions. And hey, it's free, so why not? Obviously it's got a lot of similarities to ProPresenter and it can perform a lot of the same basic functions and even some of the more advanced things that ProPresenter can do, but it's definitely not a one-to-one -one comparison. ProPresenter is more polished, it has more features, and it has more support that you can reach out to. But with FreeShow being completely free, it could definitely be a good option to a church on a super tight budget. And the fact that it mirrors ProPresenter pretty closely also means that it can be kind of an on-ramp to ProPresenter if you think that's something that you'll move to more in the future, but just can't justify the expense now. Overall, I think FreeShow is super awesome. Now, are we gonna start using it in my church? Probably not. But I think it's a great option for churches who maybe can't afford ProPresenter or maybe you're just getting started and just need something to go and don't really wanna use PowerPoint because don't use PowerPoint. I don't think it's gonna put ProPresenter out of business, but I do think it's a very serious option, especially if it keeps getting developed and continues to get more people contributing to the open source project. And if you're a developer, maybe consider contributing. The more tools that we have for this kind of thing that are actually worth using, the better. Competition pushes all products to improve, which means that hopefully ProPresenter and Proclaim and Easy Worship and all the others will see FreeShow as a reason to keep getting better and not grow stagnant with what they're doing with their features. I truly do believe this is a great option for some churches, and I think it's gonna help a lot in helping the church at large share the message of Jesus Christ, which is all of our end goal anyway. Until next time.